been, when I wrote the essay, it had been about 150 films, but now I think it's been, it's close to, it's over 200 now. I think the last time I heard it was on um, the TV show Community. Whenever they show that video kick puncher on Community that Abed made, I know no one watches Community with me, but I get a kick out of it. Um, uh, they, there's this, the Wilhelm scream shows up. It's also in Toy Story 3. It's in Howard the Duck. It's in all the Star Wars, nearly every Quentin Tarantino movie. It's in A Star is Born with Judy Garland. Uh, and it's just this horrible sound. It sounds like the Howard Dean yell, only worse. And uh, I'm sorry that I can't present it for you now, but it is very, very Googleable. Uh, and nobody knows who made the scream. Nobody knows who did it. There's a, a theory that it was Sheb Woolley, the guy who is most famous for writing and singing the song One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Eater. But other than that, nobody knows. So this is an, an essay about that scream and about how weird it is to make this sort of sonic joke about what is really the sound of someone pretending to be dying. It's called The Wilhelm Scream. Uh, 1951. Exterior. Swamp. Day. The camera rolls. A patsy stands waist deep in a soundstage mock up of Florida alligator water. You know the type. Chicken eyes. Had a skew. No gun. They never give guys like this a gun. The water around him burbles. Something's got his right leg. The patsy kicks that leg forward, throws back his hands, opens his mouth, and makes absolutely no noise. Most of us take our first gulp of air and immediately hurl it from our lungs in a scream. Perhaps this is a rejection of our initial breath. Maybe it's a celebration of hitting the outside world with both lungs running. But regardless, from birth, our vocal cords work like fingerprints, telling unique tales of our specific bodies. The sounds they make bounce around inside us and convert tones into name tags. Hello, my larynx is this large. Hello, my sinuses are stuffed with mucus. Hello, my diaphragm is stretched tight. Listen to its shape as I spring air from it like a trampoline. Pleased to meet you. Like breaking a box of emergency glass to pull an alarm when we make our voices scream, the beeline of serious air not only buzzes the famous chords that create speech and song, it also crashes into a second pair of flaps at the top of the larynx, called the false vocal cords. Only really heavy breath can push these widely spaced folds together. And this strain is the grate that we hear in a screamer's tone, a grate that articulates the rarity of its use. It says that a scream is physical work that sh we should only force on ourselves at moments of ultimatum. That's why we know to come running when we hear a scream. But storytelling complicates this physiological fact. I imagine a quiet Warner Brothers studio, sound studio in the dead of night, a man whose name we'll never know watches the dailies of the film Distant Drums in a cloud of cigarette smoke, warming up his voice and thinking of alligators. He's a looper, a vocal pro hired to redo every unliked sound in the film. Responses to punches, crowd jibber, homina, 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 barroom laughter, rot, rot. He studies the mouths of extras like our condemned patsy so he can make sounds that match their faces. On the screen before him, the patsy dies silently in the swamp, his mouth widened to almost a grin. The looper tries to mirror this strange gape and leans into the microphone. He inhales, closes his throat, and pushes all the air that he just pulled inside himself. Up in the booth, a sound engineer corrals the session tape into a can, labeling it, Man Gets Eaten by Alligator. Even without the 60-year-old reputation and cult-like following that has eventually attached itself to this sound clip, Man Gets Eaten by Alligator is remarkable. It scrambles up the anonymous author's throat in an emasculating glissando, and then slides back down the scale to land on a dejected, a dejected uh. Equal parts yelp, belch, and exhale. The scream is as dire as is goofy. A buffet, of, a buffet of all five falsetto vowels crashing into one another and then falling down the stairs. On paper, it's absolutely impossible to render. My best guess would be lowercase a, 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 lowercase e, e, capital E, capital A, capital A, dash, capital O, 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 capital H, capital U, U, lowercase I, I, U, U, H, exclamation point. <laughs> that, that works a lot better when you read it. <laughs> Hello, my leg is in the jaws of a gator. Suggest when you not when you read it when you read it you know when, you, when I don't read it. Shut up, Lane. Hello, my leg is in the jaws of a gator. Suggests the sound, but it also also offers something more because there's no such thing as a pure recorded sound, one isolated from the myriad tones and white noise that surrounds every environment, even sound studios. Thus. As this man identifies himself through the resonance of his belly and throat, the doggedness of analog also captures the sound of that looping chamber, 
The buzz of the lights, the weight and tone of the conditioned air, even the whisper-thin curls of smoke from a cigarette, they all stow away on the ions that transfer to that tape. Thus, the reality of this original moment embosses itself in the real, along with the wavelengths of the screen. And though we audience members will hear the anonymous screamer make this exact sound, in this exact space, at least 200 times in the next half century, we will never be on a first name basis with that original voice, that natural body, or that primordial room. Cut to 1953 exterior Cheyenne country. 